إنها إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله the most truthful of speeches the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sharrul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. Wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is deemed an innovation. Wa kulla bid'atin dalala. Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Wa kulla dalalatin thinnar. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire, thumma amma ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we are in this blessed month of Ramadan, by Allah's permission, Allah's mercy, Allah's blessings, we constantly want to, want to remind ourselves about how important this final message to all of mankind was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الحدى والفرقان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran. It is the guidance for all of mankind. It has the clear proofs for that guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. It is a book where we have to look no other place because even in it, and never separated from it is the command to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Allah says, In the Quran, يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَنُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجَلًا كَبِيرًا Allah says, what means verily, this Quran, this book, these words, this speech of Allah, this final message to all of humanity, guides to that which is most just, to that which is most right, and it gives glad tidings to the believers in Tawheed, the ones who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship Allah alone without any partners, and who work righteous deeds that they will have a great reward, meaning paradise, Jannah. This book, this final speech, this final message of Allah to all of humanity, Allah said, مَا فَرَّقْنَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We did not neglect anything from it. وَقَالْ وَنَزَّلْنَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تَبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ and Allah said, and we sent down this book, this Qur'an, as a reminder and explanation for everything. This book, this Qur'an, this speech of Allah, Allah said, وَلَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ This Qur'an, if it was sent down upon a mountain, you would have seen that mountain humbling itself and clefting asunder from the fear of Allah. This book, this Qur'an, this final message to all of mankind, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, qad jaa'atkum maw'idatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa hudam wa rahmatan lil mu'mineen. Allah says, what means, O mankind, there has come to you a good advice from your Lord. This Qur'an is an advice. It's a navigation system. It's a key. It's a prescription for you to live a good life here, but to have that next life be the best that you can have, which is in the place of Jannah, of paradise. This is the book of the good advice from your Lord, ordering all that is good, forbidding the evil. It is the healing. 
for any ignorance, for any doubts, for any hypocrisy, for any difficulty, for any anxiety, for any depression, for any pain. It's all healed by the words of, the words of Allah. A guidance and a mercy for the believers. Allah says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Allah says what means, and we send down from the Qur'an that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe and who obsess to Tawheed, the monetism based in Islam, and they act upon that. And it increases the volumeun, the polytheists and the wrongdoers in nothing but loss. هذا الكتاب, this Qur'an, هو كتاب Allah, it is the book of Allah, هو حبل Allah, it is the rope of Allah. Al-Namdud min as-sama'i ila ard It is outstretched from the heavens and the earth. If you were deep in a hole, full of snakes, and the only way out was a rope that was hanging down for you, you would cling on to it with your life. If you were in the middle of the ocean, and someone threw you a rope to grab onto, for you to save yourself from destruction, you would grab onto it with your life. This Qur'an is the rope of Allah. Allah said, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold tight, cling tightly to the book, the rope of Allah, and do not become divided. The rope of Allah is the book of Allah. It's the Qur'an. Hold tight to it. And if there becomes divisions, it is not the people who stick to the Qur'an and the Sunnah who are the dividers. It is the people who follow the shayateen, the devils, the desire, their desires, their whims that cause the division. If you want to be on that right path, you cling tightly to the Qur'an, which means clinging tightly to the sunnah of the Prophet Abshiru, <laughs> so give glad tidings, the Prophet said. So, the Prophet said, hold tightly, cling tightly to this book. Because this Qur'an, one end of it is in your one, uh, in Allah's hand. The other end of the book is in your hand. So hold tightly to it. Follow it. Learn it. Let it be what guides you. Let it be what makes you make your choices. Let it be what helps you live a life which is honorable to Allah, not to your fellow people from mankind. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَن تَهْلِكُوا وَلَن تَضِلُّ بَعْدُهُ أَبَدًا so he finished saying, because if you do so, if you hold fast to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, you will never be destroyed and you will never go astray. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many ayat, many suwar have specific virtues to protect from evil, to protect from the jinn and the shayateen, to increase you in reward. Because Allah's Messenger, وسلم, He said this Qur'an, it is what will raise us up or, de- or destroy us. كَمَا قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابَ أَقْوَامًا وَيَدْعُ بِهِ آخِرِينَ رواه مسلم As the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, Allah, He will raise nations because of this Qur'an. Those who stick to it, who follow it, who implement it, who learn it, who memorize it, who put it into practice, and He'll destroy others by it. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us remind ourselves of some of these things. Surah Al-Fatiha, a surah, Called Umm al Kitab, the mother of the book. Umm al Quran, the mother of the Quran. Another name for it is Al Hamd because it begins with praising Allah, and we know Alhamdulillah al Mizan that this phrase, Alhamdulillah, it fills the scales and makes them heavy with goodness. It's called Al Hamd, it's called As Salah. Why? Because the Prophet وسلم, he said, La Salata liman lam yakra bi Fatihat al Kitab, because there is no Salah. If for everyone who prays, unless they read Surah Al-Fatiha in every rak'ah, even the na'moon, even the one following the imam in the silent prayers and the out loud prayers should be reciting the Fatiha according to what is the most correct and strongest opinion. That's why it's called this salah, this, this surah is called a salah. It's called a ruqya because it can be used to help cure yourself and protect yourself from the devils and the jinn, to cure yourself from illness. In the hadith Qudsi, Allah says, I've divided the salah between me and my slaves into halves, one part for me, one part for them. He's referring to Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is the grandeur of this book. Abu Sa'id Rafi ibn al-Mu'alla, he said, 
the Prophet said to me, Allah Quran He told him, Should I not teach you what is the greatest surah in the Quran? Some of us might think it's the longest one, or the one with the most warnings or admonitions. So he took him by the Prophet took him by his hand and by his hand until they were about to leave the masjid. And Abu Sa'id, he asked him, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, وسلم, you said you were going to tell me what is the greatest surah in the Qur'an. <coughs> so the Prophet ﷺ قال, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa hiya sab'u al-mathani, wal Qur'an al-azim, alladhi utitahu, rawahu al-Bakhari. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, the greatest surah in the Qur'an is surah al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. It is the seven repeatedly recited verses and the grand Qur'an which has been given to me. This surah, seven ayat. And Allah, He extolled this greatness. And the Prophet ﷺ affirmed it by saying it's the greatest surah in the Qur'an. All the aspects of Tawheed in the first three ayat. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the Alameen. Tawheed al rububiyyah that Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth without any helpers or need for rest or sleep, or food, or drink, or any of those things. Maliki Yawm al-Din, affirming Asma'i wa Safatih. Malik, Al-Malik, he is the king, the sovereign lord of the heavens and the earth, and the day of resurrection, no one knows when it will come but he. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. You alone do we worship, you alone do we ask for help. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. The Tawheed, the belief in the oneness of Allah, that he is the only one worthy of worship. The only one we ask help for and we seek aid from and we trust and we rely on and we fear and the likes of those matters. All of those aspects of Tawheed are there. The virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَمْ يُؤْتَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِالْقُرْآنِ وَأَهْلِهِ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ تَقْدُمُهُ سُورَةَ الْبَقْرَةِ وَآلِ عمران تُحَجَّانَ تُحَجَّانِ عن صاحبهما رواه مسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the authentic hadith the Quran and its people those who implemented it mind you not just the one who says I'm a Muslim and that was my book the one who implemented this book of the, the Quran Allah's final message to all of mankind he will be, it will be brought forth on the day of resurrection being led by Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran to support their beholders what a great support they are two of the longest surah. But they have so much guidance in them, so much admonition, so much information of the tawheed that we should be upon and how nations who did not follow it were destroyed. They will lead the people of the Qur'an on that day. May Allah make us from them. ثُمَّ قَالْ لَا تَجْعَلُ بِيُوتُكُمْ مَقَابِرْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يَنْفِرُ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, do not render your homes into graveyards. Do not render your homes to be like graveyards. Verily, shaitan, it flees from the home in which Surah Al-Baqarah is read in it. So take some time to read Surah Al-Baqarah in your home so you protect your home. You ain't gonna get protection from the blue eye you hang it. That's actually shit. If you got it in your home when you go home, take it to the garage, smack it with a hammer, throw it in the garbage. You want the protection of Allah? It's in Surah Al-Baqarah. It's in these ayat, in these surah. This is what will protect you. You making dua to Allah, you reading the adhkar of the masa of sabah, of the evening and the morning. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأوا Surah Al-Baqarah فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا بَرَكَةً وَتَرْكَهَا حَسْرَةً وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَقَلَةِ رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said read Surah Al-Baqarah because if you grasp this Surah Surah Al-Baqarah it will be a blessing for you if you abandon this, this Surah you'll be in a pitiful state it should concern you and grieve you and the magicians those who try to give sihr and hasad and the ayn the evil eye and the likes of you they can't tolerate it they cannot bear it in the surah is ayat al-kursi. A'adhumu ayat al-Qur'an. The greatest ayat in the whole Qur'an. The greatest surah, surah al-Fatiha. 
the greatest ayah, ayat al-kursi. Ayah 255 in the Qur'an. If you haven't memorized it, memorize it. It's very simple. And the reward for the one who says it at certain times is more great than we could ever imagine. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qala ma khalaq Allah min sama'in wa la ardin a'zamu min ayat al-kursi qala Sufyan la anna ayat al-kursi huwa kalam Allah wa kalam Allah a'zamu min khalq Allah min as-sama'i wal ard rawahu at-Tirmidhi wa hadha hadith sahih an Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu he said Allah has not created in the heavens or in the earth what is more magnificent than ayat al-kursi we spew it out. You say it fast, you're not reflecting upon it. And we can do that tafsir another time. Sufyan, he added, he said, because ayat al kursi is the speech of Allah. And Allah's speech is greater than Allah's creation of the heavens and the earth. Subhanallah. We can't even create a fly. Allah creates the heavens and the earth. What we see, what we can't see. What we still may see, but it is unknown to us. And yet, Ayat al-Kursi is greater than all of this, yet we think this is all great. <laughs> Reflect, ya akhwan wa akhwat. Abu Hurairah, he narrated that Allah's Messenger, وسلم, put him in charge of Zakat al-Fitr one year. And he saw someone coming and taking from this, the, the stockpiles of the food. He said, I caught him and I told him that I will take him to Allah's Messenger. Then Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he told them the rest of the narration. So the, it was said, فَقَالَ إِذَا أَوَيْتَ إِلَى فَرَاشِكَ فَقْرَ آيَةُ الْكُرْسِ لَنْ يَزَالُ عَلَيْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَافِظٍ وَلَا, يق, ولا يَقْرَبُكَ شَيْطَانٌ حَتَّى تُصْبِحْ فَقَالَ النَّبِيهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم صَدَقَكَ وَهُوَ كَذُوبٌ ذَلِكَ الشَّيْطَانِ This hadith which we find in Sahih Bukhari, when Abu Huraira, he told the whole narration, he added that he, the thief, يعني, said, whenever you go to bed, you want to protect yourself from me and devils, read Ayat al-Kursi. When you go to sleep, because whenever you go to bed and you recite it, a guardian from Allah will be guarding you, and Satan will not approach you from the dawn. And some narrations say, if you say it in the morning, the same will happen. Protection until the evening. On that, the Prophet ﷺ said, this thief told you the truth. But he is a liar. The one who came to you, this was shaitan himself. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this ayat al-kursi is a great ayah. The greatest ayah in the Quran. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ قَرَأَ آيَةَ الْكُرْسِ جُبْرَ كُلِّ صَلَاةٍ مَكْتُوبَةٍ لَمْ يَمْنَعُهُ دَخُولِ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَمُوتِ the Prophet Sallallahu he said in authentic hadith, whoever reads ayat al-kursi after every fard salah, five times a day, it doesn't take you a minute if you read it slowly even, before you stand up, even if you're in a rush, to say ayat al-kursi and read the subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allah, 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 ten times, right? Even for things you have to do. <coughs> the delay of one or two minutes ain't going to kill you. Whoever reads ayat al-kursi after every fard salah, if you don't have it memorized, grab the mushaf and read it from it. Then you say you have to have it to memory. Whoever reads it after every fard salah, nothing is preventing you from going to Jannah except the fact that you're still living. May Allah make us of those who benefit from it, inshaAllah. The virtue of the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ قَرَأَ بِالْآيَتَيْنِ مِنْ آخِرِ سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ فِي لَيْلَةِ the Prophet ﷺ, he said in this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, whoever reads the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, to the end, alright, in a night, it will be sufficient for him. The meaning, according to the ulama, it will grant him the reward of being up for tahajjud, for the night prayers, and reciting the Qur'an. It's a sufficient protection for him, from all of the calamities. It is sufficient for him from the evil of the shayateen of the devils. And that these two verses will drive out the evil of mankind and the devils away from you. <clears throat> away, away from you. Two ayat. Have it next to your bed. Recite it so you can take and uh, absorb these virtues for yourself. 
the virtue of Al-Fatiha and Al-Baqarah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he said while Jibreel alayhi salam was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu he heard the opening of a gate above him. So he raised his head and from there would come an angel. He said this gate has never been opened before this day. Then an angel descended from that gate and the angel was one that had never descended before that day. And this, it was said that this is an angel that has descended to the earth not before this day, he gave salams, he gave his greetings of peace and said, Abshir binurayni utitahuma lam yatuhuma nabiyun qablak, fatihat al kitab, wa khawatima surat al bakra, lam taqra bi harfim min huma illa rutita. The Prophet he said, then, or it was said to him, this is an authentic hadith, receive glad tidings of Muhammad, O Muhammad وسلم, of two lights, which have been given to you, which were not given to any, the lights of it were not given to any other prophet before you. He said, Fatiha al-Kitab, the opening book, Surah Al-Fatiha, and the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, never do you read a letter from each of these two surah, except that you will be given it. Ruahu Muslim, means you will be given the reward of it, the reward of its recitation. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, <coughs> Surah Al-Kahf, Qala Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, Man hafidha ashara ayatin, Min awwali Surah Al-Kahf, Usama min al-Dajjal, Ruahu Muslim. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, Whoever memorizes the ten verses from the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf will be protected from the Dajjal, from the Antichrist. And this is a major fitna. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, There is no greater fitna between the creation of Adam and Yom Al-Qiyamah than the fitna of Dajjal, than the fitna of the Antichrist. There's no greater fitna. And if we should live to see that time, we need all the help, all the protection we can get. You want it? Memorize the first 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf. Another narration mentions the last 10 ayat and Shaykh Al-Albani, he authenticated that one. So it is also, also an authentic hadith. So aim for the first 10 and the last 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a surah, if you read the whole surah on Friday, it provides you light, nur, until the next Friday. And of the last ones we will mention, the virtue of surah Tabarak, surah Al-Mulk, a surah that if you read it daily, it will protect you from adab al-Qabr. It will protect you, surah Al-Mulk, min adab al-Qabr, from the punishment of the grave. A punishment that can happen to us even though we're Muslim. Even if we were those who prayed and fasted, we may be of those who are punished in the graves. We seek Allah's protection from them. But this surah, if you read it daily, in the evening, it can protect you from it. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ سُورَةً فِي الْقُرْآنِ ثَلَاثُونَ آيَةً شُفِعَتْ لِصَاحِبِهَا حَتَّى غُفِرَ لَهَ تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said in the authentic hadith, in the sunnah of Abu Dawood and Al-Tirmidhi, Verily, a surah in the Qur'an which contains 30 ayat, 30 verses. It intercedes for its intercessor until it's forgiven. It will ask Allah, this surah alone will be given a voice to ask Allah to forgive you and have mercy on you so you don't go to the hellfire. And so that you enter Jannah. Just to read 30 ayat again at night, if you add it with ayat al-kursi. And some of the ones we'll mention after the sitting. And you add it with, yani, the, uh, yeah, I mean, receiving this what are you taking of your time and your day to give it for your dunya and your akhirah to give it to your creator who's provided you with things more than we could ever enumerate for in terms of blessings and he said this surah is exalted is him in whose hand is the dominion it will plead for its owner so be owners of surah, surah al-mulk surah tabarak subhanakallah <coughs> Brothers, if you can move forward, fill in all the gaps. We'll figure out the salah time when it's when uh, how to make the road straight when the time comes. We'll fill in the gaps so those coming in can pray two rakats before they sit down, as is the sunnah for the brothers coming in. Pray two rakats before you sit. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the final book, the final message, the final words of Allah to all of humanity. It is a blessing from Allah, the greatest blessing we have. 
greater than our mothers and our fathers, greater than our children, greater than what we may own, to be a part of this ummah, to be in this deen, to be from the muhidun, to be from those who worship Allah alone without any partners, to have tawheed. Nothing is greater than that. And it is a blessing from Allah we're taking advantage of. We need to come back to this rope of Allah, the book of Allah, the Quran, that's outstretched from the heavens and earth. Cling on to it. Tamassuku bi. All of you, together, hold tightly to the book of Allah. And in its command, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because من يطعر الرسول فقد أطاع الله. Because whoever obeys the Prophet ﷺ, this person has obeyed Allah. Where do you get that knowledge? You get it from the book of Allah itself. Cling tightly to it and do not become divided. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, just to reap some more of the benefits Surah Al-Kafirun. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قل يا أيها الكافرون تعدلوا ربع القرآن. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith from Abdullah ibn Umar and it is in the Sahih of Al-Tabarani. He said قل يا أيها الكافرون Surah Al-Kafirun is equal to one-fourth of the Quran. ثم قال أقرأ قل يا أيها الكافرون عند منامك براءة من الشرك. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the hadith which is Sahih in the Sunnah al-Bayhaqi, he said, read Surah Al-Kafirun, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهُ الْكَافِرُونَ It won't take you more than 12 seconds to read it correctly. At your time of sleep, when you're in your bed before sleeping, for verily, it will, it's an immunity from shirk, from associating partners with Allah. وَإِنَّ الشِّرْكِ فَعَضُمُ سَيِّهِ The shirk is the greatest sin. It's the greatest of sins. In Allah, لا يخفر أن يشرك به. Allah said, He will not forgive the sin of shirk unless you make a sincere tell before. But any other sin than that, even the major ones, Allah may still forgive you even if you did not make tell before. But shirk is a, is a no go. Surah Al Kafirun, Surah Al Asr, Abu Madin al Darimi. He said, when two men from the Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, were together and they would leave, they would not leave one another until they read Surah Al Asr. Three ayat. Allah swearing by time that mankind is in loss except for those who believe and those who do righteous deeds and those who affirm the truth and those who are patient in their calling others towards that truth. They would not leave one another until they read Surah Al-Asr. How many of us do that? Three ayat, a small surah. You read it because you want to hurry your salah. You're not realizing its weight and its benefit and its virtues. The virtue of Surah Al-Ikhlas قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قل هو الله أحد تعدل ثلث القرآن that this surah surah al-ikhlas know it they did a, one of these tiktoks or whatever of asking people in Muslim countries in Muslim lands which surah surah al-ikhlas they didn't know which one it was because they know it as قل هو الله أحد it's surah al-ikhlas the purity the sincerity this is the name of قل هو الله أحد it's the name of that surah he said, this surah is equal to one-third of the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ, he used to read it in the two sunnah of Fajr. He used to read it with, with uh, Surah Al-Kafirun. He used to read it in Salat Al-Witr. He used to read it during Hajj after Tawaf behind Maqam Ibrahim. Qul Ya Al-Kafirun, Surah Al-Ikhlas. He used to read it in bed three times with Al-Falaq and Al-Nas. He used to read it after every salah one time. Qul Hu Allahu Ahad, Surah Al-Ikhlas. After every salah one time, but after Fajr and Maghrib three times. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, realize its virtue. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith, he had said, Inna hubbuha adkhalaq al-jannah. That loving the surah is a way for you to enter Jannah. وَقَالْ مَنْ قَرَأَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ حَتَّى يختمها عشر مرات بنى الله له قصرا في الجنة. And the authentic hadith in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, Sheikh Al Albani authenticated it. Whoever reads Surah Al Ikhlas, aka Qul Hu Allah Ahad, ten times in a day Allah will build for him or her a palace in Jannah. To read it ten times in the day. The virtue of the Ma'awadatan, of Al Falaq and Al Nas, literally. The final two chapters, the Ma'awadatan mean seeking refuge. The Prophet ﷺ, he said regarding it, while the Messenger of Allah ﷺ and I was going from Al-Juhfa to Al-Abwa, 
we were overpowered by winds and severe darkness. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began to يتعود به قل أعوذ برب الفلق وقل أعوذ برب الناس ويقول يا عقبة تعود بهما فما تعود متعود بمثلهما he told عقبة he said to him oh عقبة seek refuge with Allah he was reading قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الناس and he told عقبة read these two قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الناس seek refuge with Allah through them for no person seeking refuge has sought refuge with anything like them before. The grandeur of these surah. Again, these are read with al-ikhlas, surah al-ikhlas, once after every prayer, three times after fajr and maghrib. While in your bed, the Prophet ﷺ, he would cup his hands while laying in bed and read them, surah al-ikhlas, surah al-falaq, surah al-nas, one time while blowing into his hands and reading them into his hands, then wipe over his head and his face and then the rest of the front of his body. And he would do it three times. You want to protect yourself. You're going through hardship. You want Allah's aid. You want Allah's protection from jinn, from sihr, from, sh- uh, from shirk, from the ain, from hasad, from whatever it may be. It's in the Quran. It's in these ayat. It's in these surah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we will conclude with a beautiful mentioning. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله فيما عنده رواه مسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the hadith There is not a group which has gathered in the houses of Allah reciting the book of Allah studying the book of Allah between them, except that tranquility, <coughs> sedateness, and peace will descend upon them. Mercy will befall them. The angels will encircle them. And Allah will mention them to those who are with Him, meaning the highest of the angels. And He will fall short in gaining knowledge, memorizing the Qur'an, should at least put them into action in that which lineage will not hasten Him to do. Where your family, your blood family ties, your wealth cannot help you at least learn them and put them into action. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us not fall under that banner. Where Allah said, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا May Allah protect us from this. Amen. What Allah says, what means, and it will be said, oh, uh, that Prophet Muhammad will say, O oh, my Lord, indeed my people deserted this Qur'an. Can you imagine living the life as a Muslim but falling onto those who deserted this book, this Qur'an, with it, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. When we were told if we have these two, the Qur'an and the Sunnah, we'll never go astray. The solution to all our problems, the solution to any sadness or depression or anxiety, any troubles or trials, any hardships, it's in the Qur'an. The guidance is there, the cure is there, the healing is all there. We just need to take it my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, realize these virtues. And may Allah make us of Ahlul Qur'an, Ahlullah wa khasatahu. May Allah make us of the special people to Allah, the people of the Qur'an, the people of Allah, His special ones. It can only come if we read this book, memorize this book, study this book, and implement this book. The final message to all of mankind. You probably still have a final letter or a card from your mother or your father or your wife or your husband or whatever it may be or your child. And you hold on to it. You safeguard it. The house was burning. You might save it before you save someone or something else because of how special it is. Ain't nothing more special in your life than this book. Ain't nothing more special in your life than the words of Allah. If there is, you've got to question yourself. It needs to be given its attention. And you'll see the ummah in Palestine, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Shishan, in Chechnya, in Burma, in Burma, the, 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 the Uyghurs, the brothers in China, all over the Muslim land, you'll see the solutions coming. The aid will come from Allah. But if we desert this book like we have been doing, then we've got no one to blame but the problems in the, in the world but ourselves. There's a couple quick announcements, inshallah. The fidya, if you cannot fast, and you cannot make up your fast, the fidya is, we're saying $7 per person just because some things have gone up. 
If you give it to me or you put it in the fitr boxes, that'll all suffice. It'll all go out. If you want to get it out earlier, we've been sending some of that money um, to feed those who are in need, inshallah, from it. Zakat al fitr, the fitrana. Uh, will be starting to be collected next Tuesday. We're going to wait till the last 10 days. It should be given in the last day or two, but we're trying to get that money out. We buy some stuff locally for those who are in need, and then we send the rest of it to typically Yemen and Afghanistan, and it's dispersed as food. It cannot be given as money. You give it as money, we make sure food is purchased with it. So we, again, hold fast to the Quran and the Sunnah. We want it collected as cash. And we don't have a lot of turnaround time. So starting Tuesday, in the Qiyam prayers, the box will be out. Donate in it, or not donate, pay it. This helps purify your fasting from any errors. Put it in there, inshallah. Bring cash for it. If you really can't, see me privately. And then we will get this out according to the sunnah. Um, tomorrow there is a community of thought. It is being sponsored fully, just like last week. You just come with yourselves and your families. That's all you have to do. You don't have to bring any dishes. Everything is being catered. It was an easy way to, have, to, to, to go through it, inshallah, to, to get the food, etc. We're going to have a lot of leftovers or throw away. We're going to continue with that again this week. We're going to come and do a talk to benefit at 6.45. You and your families are invited, Muslim, non-Muslim. In this time that we're in, where we see people believing that our Prophet Isa salam died for their sins, was dead for three days, then resurrected, and crucified to a cross, and the likes of all these matters, okay, or the crucifixion, I think they said, came before it all, whatever, the point of it, we should remind ourselves what we've been given of knowledge from the Quran and the Sunnah about the Dajjal, the coming of the Antichrist, and the descending of Isa alayhi salam. So we will go over this story, inshallah, tomorrow, 6.45, until the time for Madrid comes in. So join us so we can all benefit. Zakat al-Mal does not go to the masjid. It does not go to the Kathy Fitter box. The Kathy Mad can only go to the poor and the needy, those struggling who come and see us. We affirm that they are in need and then we help them out with it. We collect that separately. So give it, there's an envelope that says the Kathy Mad only, then you must put the money in there if you don't want, if you want to be anonymous, or you give it to me or Brother Masood so we make sure it doesn't mix with the masjid or academy money. For the fundraiser last week, we raised 35 spots, alhamdulillah. 65 spots remain, each tile, so that this masjid, this community this year, can sponsor the final science lab. One brother did the other one by himself. May Allah reward him and his family in this life and the next and give him the best of Jannah. The other one we said as a community, let's put it together. The total is about 250,000. So 100 spots, 100 tiles, each one $2,500. An investment in your akhir. It is not a detraction from your dunya. It is for you to have something that even when you have passed, it will continue to benefit you and benefit you. We're still taking the donations to it. We cannot leave this month without that 250000 being collected. So, it's on you. 15 days or, or less of Ramadan left. Eid might be in two Fridays from now. Don't lose out of these opportunities. You may not get them again. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منكم واجد ان كان تسميا طيبا نجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزه يما يصفون سلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين